Hold on. So here's the dilemma we're at. So we're not getting any fuel now that everything's done. Now here's the thing. This truck has a quarter of a tank and the fuel pump, well there is no in-tank pump. They're not electronic. You have to prime them mechan mechanically with your hand. And the, the draw straw is in the middle and at a quarter tank it's going to be a pain in the ass to prime this thing. Mine was the same way. I always had to have like a half a tanker above. So, oh yeah, So and also the jack's bent, so we were going to try to lift it up, but that jack is snap-on quality. Bent? No. It moved over a little bit, so I put my fat ass up against it, and I pushed it over about like six inches. Are we so. that or? Yeah, it's fine. See, I don't think it'll work. He put the jack on the back, but the, the sump is always in the middle. Actually, let's... uh. Let's do some something here. Right there, actually no. It's in the back. Josh, you might be hurting it actually. You might want to lift it up from the front. Yeah, I feel like that looks a lot sleeker. A little muffler right there. So that looks way better than it's sticking up the way that it did. Um, obviously it's not permanent. I'm gonna go through and like try to make it as nice as possible, but for what it is, I mean, it's not going anywhere. It's decently hard mounted. I could just leave it like that permanently, to be honest. It just looks, it looks so much better. And there's clearance between the frame. So when you actually like lift the bike up, you get more clearance out of it. So I like that. Now we're dealing with this. Um, he decided to jack it up to that. He's going to go get some diesel for it. And then... Uh, We'll try to see if we can't get it started, but yeah, it's definitely not, um, we're trying to prime the system and we're not getting any fuel past it. So we'll uh, try to fill it up a little bit and go from there. The other thing, the reason I did this as well, not only does it look sleek, but that gives me this pipe right here that I can adapt to this pipe here and we can actually build a second baffle in this thing. So I'd like to be able to build something that can just like slip down in and create like a decent baffle because like if you look down in there there is it, it's huge compared to this like it's like going from this like that's the size difference like a hot dog down a hallway so at some point i'll make a baffle for it just to quiet it down if i don't like how it sounds because it sounded great before it seems like it's a little deeper and tone happy now compared to like before it just was super loud. So the shorter the exhaust I'm noticing, the quieter it was. The longer that exhaust, the louder it gets because it kind of like microphones itself, especially with this little piece here because it's going from the stock size to like the big size. So it like megaphones and then it's even longer. So as I noticed, people seem to kind of complain about the 300. You know, it's a nice bike. It really is. It does what it needs to do. I see a lot of guys in my areas running around the 250cc bikes from Amazon. They're little sport bikes, but they're like $2,800, and it's like, this was way cheaper, and it's a name brand, so I can get parts for it easier, but like, those little Chinese bikes, they're pretty cool. I've seen them running around everything. I mean, they are a little expensive for what they are, and parts are hard to find, but it's just cool as shit. Guys are out here, they enjoy riding, they don't need the biggest thing in the world, they're not trying to overcompensate with a bigger bike, and they're just having a good time, getting amazing fuel economy, and happy doing what they do. We got the unlimited battery charge hack right here. It's unlimitedly charging itself from the concrete. So we went and grabbed, well, he went and grabbed 13 gallons of diesel. And we're going to fill this thing up and hopefully we can get it primed. Because this was an issue that I had with my truck even. Like every time it needed to do something, if I did a fuel filter and I had a quarter tank or even a half a tank or less, I was not getting my truck primed. Josh's logic also was... Oh, it'll be fine. Remember when you said, oh, I'm not going to prime it. I'm just going to start it. It starts right up, and then it loses prime, and then it's... It took two minutes. I was like, it's fine, and then all of a sudden... It's and then it's not there. fine. This wasn't fine. And then you held it to the floor, and it died. Yeah. Look, Josh, shorty. Let's see what Numbnuts is up to over here. Wow. Battery charger. One, two, three, four... Are you Hi. are you filling? Are you filling your diesel up? Sort of. I'm spilling the shit out of it. Cause it's running down the side. That's kitty litter. Yeah. Now it'll never run again. It's performance. Poor boy's pouring. Kitty litter.
Four and one strength. Four and one strength kitty litter. Will the truck run off of it? Four to a depth. That'd of be my video title. Inches. Hopefully we get some prime out of this fucker now. Oh my god! Fucking not damn, Josh. Are you priming it? Are no. Damn that feet though. This fucker comes in in his socks. So I have spent, we have spent hours trying to figure out why this thing won't do prime, and we're at the point where it's just being a pain in the ass. So Josh, uh, so what we've been doing, what I, 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 this was my idea. So I decided I took a rubber hose, my old motorcycle exhaust, and I stuffed a rag. That line's fucked up for some reason. And stuffed a rag in the hole, put my hand around it, just enough to hold, you know, 5, 10 PSI. Josh, film, film that. Hold that with one hand, and uh, I'll do it again. And I'm going to keep my hand around it. You ready, Josh? Yeah. Film that part. Let me know when. Go ahead. This time. Yep. No, it's not there yet. Yep, you're you're getting diesel. You can stop. Okay. So needless to say, redneck ingenuity at its finest. Yeah, that's nice. So we did get diesel out of it. So now plug that in. So now my next step. Now that we have diesel and not air, if you have air, it's going to be a pain in the ass to prime. So. Make sure you have a full tank before you do this. Yeah. And learn how to pressurize a fuel tank. So I'm gonna leave that hooked up, just in case. But uh, if you want to prime it, just get that line back on there, prime it, and then. That line's a pain in the ass. And then hopefully it works. But this could also entail a problem with the lift pump. Maybe we did something wrong. But priming it shouldn't have anything to do with that spring. So let's just hope it starts and hope it runs. After all that, we st it's still not starting. It's still not chiefing. Um, we're going to pull the lift pump again and make sure like everything's good. Make sure we didn't snap the shaft. Damn it, Ezekiel. Yeah. Yeah, we'll pull it. Hopefully, we can get it running tonight. If not, there's always tomorrow. Let's see if this... I didn't even film it, motherfucker. There's an issue we're having. It's getting fuel, but it's blowing it right out the side. So here we are, another day. Um, it didn't take too kindly to this extra spring, right? Like, it destroyed everything. So, he went and brought a new lift pump, and we're going to reuse this spacer plate here. But you can see what exactly, like there, it was a lot of spring tension. Like this rod is all but seized in here. You got, oh wow, yeah it is. So, a lot of spring tension, destroyed the house. I've never had one do that before. But that's supposed to sit down in there. So we're like, alright, well, here's the springy bot. So we were going to try to put it in this one, but the chambers are a little smaller in here. So we're able to just throw the stock one back in. And uh, call it a day, but keep in mind, made in China. So, I'm just going to throw this in with the little spacer plate, call it a day. Then she'll run and drive. All right, we got it. Well, I got it back installed. Well, I guess uh, at this point, it's got fuel, right? Want to try cranking her over? May uh, wait, make sure your, uh, your bar's out of the... Are you sure? Uh, I'm going to check just because. Okay. Give your starter a break. All right. <laughs> so, yeah, like. Should fire up here any minute, but it's getting fuel pressure now, which is good. 
All this over a damn upgraded spring. Just get a fast. Yeah, anyways. Oh, this was for nothing. But let's see what's your fuel pressure. Let well, you get a look real quick. It's still at zero. You'll probably lose fuel pressure because once you turn that key on it and you're sucking that up. We're getting something. All right. See if she starts. Oh, you're getting some coal now. That's terrible. Ah, oh, here we go. Here we go. Oh, it's so, it's trying. All right, boy. Come on, start. <laughs> you poor starter. <laughs> you poor starter. Yeah. Up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down. <laughs> I was I, like, maybe we'll lawn over it? No. So the only difference of this is where you're going to need a new starter. <laughs> <laughs> you need to go away. <laughs> Rest in peace, you poor starter. You want to bring it back? Bring it out a little bit. Back it up a little bit, just so the exhaust is outside. I think it was the overflow valve too. I guess they're not made for a stock pump. That's what he said. The valve made that big of a difference. Yeah, replace that overflow valve with the one that was in it and it fired right up. Cool. All right, you wanna fire it up again and uh, make sure that we're not leaking? One of the fittings was a little loose. Tighten that up, they're good to go. No leaks. Sounds good. What's your fuel pressure at? 25. Huh? That poor tailgate. That's the old head. Get it cleaned up and then throw it in your storage yard. So did you learn any lessons from today? Uh, no, I want what I want. <laughs> You, you didn't really learn to leave stock parts alone? Yeah, that really sucked, though. Yeah, it did. That but. sucked a lot. I don't think there's a blowout, do you? Hopefully. <laughs> yeah, they gotta go to the storage unit.
Yeah, take that too. You don't want that getting rained on. Yeah. I'd try to clean that up at some point if you can. Maybe take it to a machine shop or some shit. I mean, you can't take it to a machine shop. Anybody want it? Yeah, does anybody want this? Free head. Free head? Nah, I yeah. don't know. Maybe. 350 bucks. I mean, is it worth anything being a stock Cummins head or... 350 bucks. If, if it's a gamble using it, it, you might as well not even sell it. It's not a gamble, you just gotta get it machined. A heavy bitch. One thing to look at as well is these guys, make sure none of them pop, but these don't have any inside the head, inside the valve covers, like the common rails do. Common rails, you can blow out one of these freeze plugs inside the valve covers, but these don't have any. All right, well, since we really didn't do anything different, you guys haven't really seen this thing on the road in a while. So he dailies it. I'm gonna drive it to work, so I'll figure, let him start it and See how she sounds on the way out. I like your one reverse light that's LED and the other one that's not. Yeah. Yeah, the one over there is halogen. All right, we'll get out of here. Just send it. It's a Cummins. Good old come apart. This guy generally uses quality parts, so he's happy to get an OEM, an OEM uh, fuel pump. God, I wish I wish my 12 out was that loud. Let's see if the mileage shows on this. What's mileage? 235. Is that clean title or not? Yeah. Clean title. 65. Where's the clean for what it is? Still, of course, it's a good running truck. That's all it is. I gotta touch this up yet. Yeah, I put some of Josh's shit on here because it was just needs a little touch. Well, well, I put his ceiling stuff on there. So, what it is, not bad. 65 or best offer. What was the lift in the front? Three inch in the front, two and a half in the back. Less than a thousand miles on the tires. Um, more cab space in my truck. No. <laughs> a little bit of spot here, but all in all, clean truck. If anybody's interested, clean frame, no rot. What year is it? 05. There you go, guys. I'll go over the interior as well real quick. Yeah, the interior is pretty clean for what it is. No tears, no rips. There you go. If you guys want a good look at it. Old seat. Seat delete. Nice and sleek. It actually follows the taillight really, really nicely. And gives me a little bit of, oh, that's plastic. I thought that was a cushion. Oh, well, it gives me a little bit of seat support, right? Not bad for 20 bucks. Now to replace the shitty pedal. All right, so this is gonna replace that. They're black, they're nice, they're adjustable. I'm gonna leave them exactly where they are, but they're adjustable and shit, so. Cool. And then we don't have to worry about this. Finally fixed this pedal. Here's how I'm gonna end it out for you guys. So, got this new new pedal on. Works like a charm, just gotta get used to the angle on it. Rear seat and, but all right, there she is. Also got the new shifter on there. So we'll see how it does, if it breaks, if it doesn't. 
and uh, go from there. These new pedals, figure I'll do a video in the daylight since I didn't edit last night. <clears throat> but here they are. Not too bad. I don't like the bracket being that color, but. And here's the clutch lever for the shifter. So, eh, they ain't the greatest. I think it moved the pedal assembly. It used to be over here, and now it's up here. So, we'll see how I like it in the long term. And then this guy back here. <clears throat> Last thing coming for it's frame sliders, and then we are done. I like that, that. As always, go check out Mud Flap. Link in the description. See you in the next one.